NLX abandoned the North American users of its juice box product so you can no longer use advanced charger functions. In this video, I'm going to turn this into this by installing this. If you already know the background of NLX, it's juice box home EVSE, aka charger, and are just interested in the upgrade, you can skip ahead using the chapters below. But for those interested, I'll go briefly into a history of the what and why of making this change. The Italian utility NLX bought the company eMotor Works some years ago, who made a very robust and functional home EV charger called the Juice Box. They then modified the juice box to use their proprietary software. This worked out well for some time and the juice box even became one of the preferred EV chargers for electric utility partnerships like Consumers Energy here in Michigan. If you bought either a ChargePoint Home or NLX juice box, you were eligible to get a $500 rebate, which covered the bulk of the hardware cost. By the way, today it's no longer hardware specific, but the $500 rebate still exists. So check with your utility and you can still get a rebate for a home charger. As a result, the juice box became quite popular both as a home and commercial level two charger. Over time, the JuiceNet software and app became worse with each update and other EVSE makers started to make headway in North America. In late 2024, NLX announced that it was exiting the North American market and was turning off its servers. This move locked users out of their juice boxes, user interface and functions like scheduling, data logging and power settings. If users didn't remove their schedule or power reduction settings before the server shutdown, those settings were locked in. So the best case is you had a dumb charger with no advanced features. Worst case is you had settings that you no longer wanted, thereby making the unit unreliable. One solution, of course, is to ditch the juice box, throw it away and get another EVSE. However, that's pretty expensive. So if you're considering going this route, I do recommend a charger that's OCPP compliant. I'm not gonna get into it, Google it if you need to. But that means that if the manufacturer pulls a similar stunt as NLX and, or goes bankrupt, the hardware platform can be loaded with another manufacturer's software. My personal favorite of these is still the Grizzly line of chargers and the Grizzly Mini is still my favorite. I've never gotten any of theirs for free, so that's my actual recommendation without any favoritism. I have a review on my channel of the Grizzly Mini and I'll put a link in the video description. Another solution is to use some parts of the juice box like the J1772 cable and the input cable, which are fairly pricey, and build another EVSE with a kit that's less expensive than a full EVSE. I did that in the last two videos I made using the Open EVSE branded kit. Again, links to those videos in the description. Finally, the same company, Open EVSE, makes some drop-in hardware card kits that allows the juice box to functionally become an Open EVSE charger with all the benefits of that platform. Right now, these are listed on the Open EVSE site for $99, so I ordered one. Again, links will be in the description. So for the rest of this video, I'm going to show you how to do that installation, which Open EVSE classifies as easy skill level. So if you have a juice box sitting around or you're still using it as a dump charger but would like to get the old functionality back, consider this drop-in upgrade. But for now, let's get into it. The installation guides can be found on the Open EVSC website under Support and Guides. Then drill down to Juice Box and select either the Gen 1 or Gen 2 upgrade card depending on which you ordered. Just as with the Open EVSC kit builds, there are full color interactive guides to help you. So first of all, we need to open up the case. And in order to do that, we'll flip it on its head. So on the back side, there are four Phillips head screws that we need to remove. So let's go ahead and take those out. Remember to save those because we're gonna need those when we close up the case again. Okay, we'll turn this over, holding on to the lid because we don't wanna stress the cable that's connected to the lid because there's some LEDs in the front. Right here, feel some tension. There's the connection and they're soldered in place, which means you gotta take it off of this board. Let's survey the juice box itself. Under here is the contactor. This is the high voltage, high energy wiring. What we need to do is to remove this green circuit board and replace it with the one we got from OpenEVSC. 
So we just need to carefully pull these out. There are often some little hooks or other mechanisms to keep them in place. Just be careful not to snap any of these plastic bits off. So the one connected to the lid does seem to have a hook underneath somewhere and I can't see that. So I'm gonna leave that for last. First of all, I'm gonna take off this green cable here, which is also what they tell us to do first in the instructions. I'm gonna to remember to keep all the fasteners because we're probably gonna need those again. Same thing on the other side, this green cable. Before we do anything else, let's cut some of these cable ties so we can more easily get to these wires. And now let's go around pulling the wires off carefully. Now everything's disconnected from the top of the card. Now let's take the screws off that are holding the card down. And now the card is loose. So now let me pull it up and I should be able to inspect the underside to see how these other two cables are connected. Yep, they've got the little hooks, just difficult to see from the top. Now everything's disconnected and we can set this card aside. So this part was relatively intuitive. I didn't use the online guide because I just disconnected everything. But for the next part, for the reconnection, I wanna make sure I do it in the right order and in the right spots. So I'm gonna go ahead and get out my computer and pull up the interactive guide. So just for orientation, this is the top of the box. This is really the top right. I have the whole thing turned sideways. So now we're gonna install the open EVSE card, which is the controller and Wi-Fi replacement version two, version 1.0.3. This diagonal cutout is gonna go in the top right of the box so that it lines up with all of the screws. So let's place the card. And we need to pull these wires out from underneath. This green wire does go back in, so we can put it in exactly the same orientation. And the instructions say add the single green wire under the top left. And remember, this is the top right here. So top left single wire. And then we're going to install on the right hand side these three green wires, which green typically is ground. The longest screw of these with the washer should be reserved for the one with the three connectors. And the others will likely all be the same. And I'm only gonna loosely attach this so I can tighten things up later. And again, the longest screw is going to go on what is the bottom left with the three green wires. Then line it up with the case screw hole. Step four says to connect the AC wires so we got to identify the AC wires coming from the circuit board and relay module. Tie wrap them together, connect AC input, red and black small two position connector, and AC test, red and black large three position connector. So this is the connector that we're looking at right here on the board, AC input. So that's these, these two guys right here, the red and the black. So I routed these underneath because they were a little bit snug. And I hope this doesn't cause any interference with the wires here. The next connector is going to be also the red and black with the six position connector AC test. So the next step is to take the wires from the donut shaped uh, amp meter and attach it to the AMPCT, which is this guy right here. The one with the extra wire coils goes into the test coil. This is also keyed. So this says DC relay here. And this is the yellow and white wire. And then the donut shaped coil with the additional wire wrapped to the GFCI connector. Then last but not least, the blue is the pilot wire going to the J-plug 
and that needs to go into the pilot connector and looks like all of mine are accounted for but now I do want to put in the zip ties so I can make this a little bit neater and keep the red and black away from the other wires. So now let's keep the red and black high voltage wires away from the others if possible. Okay, last but not least, there's one connector left here, RGB LED, and that is for the lid. But before I do that, I want to tighten down the board itself. So I left it loose up until now. So I want to make sure you don't use the long screws from the lid. So we're going to use the smaller ones. The only longer one on the board itself was the one with the three green connectors. I have to get between some of these connectors. Maybe it would have been better to tighten the card down first. That's the last thing we're going to connect. And this is keyed, so you really can't mess that up. Line up the screw holes, flip it back over. They're going to put the four screws back in. And everything's back together. So, time to plug it in and test it. There is a quick start guide included for the Open EVSC Wi Fi connection. So, first, you can connect directly to the Wi-Fi board on the charger and then you can set it up so that this will talk to a Wi-Fi router and the device that you control it with will be on the same router. So as long as you can connect to the same router, you should be able to connect to it. All right, I just put this on a workbench and let's plug this guy in. Do the Nemo 1450. And I see some lights. Ooh, red. Not sure I'm happy about that. So I was able to connect and it's giving me a GFCI self-test field. Not sure why. I might have to open this up again and that may be why this is red. But it is talking to it. So the Wi-Fi module seems to be active. Other than this GFCI thing, it seems to be working. So I'm going to pop mine open again and see if I can find if I screwed up somewhere. So I rechecked all the connectors surrounding the GFCI, refitted everything, and now I'm getting a green light. I haven't tried charging with it yet, but green is good, and I fired up the software again, and it doesn't show me a GFCI fault. While I'm not going to get into the details of the interface, here are a few quick pointers to get you started. Make sure you note down the four-digit alphanumeric code of your particular unit's Wi-Fi identifier. Once you connect to that Wi-Fi node and set up connection to your router, that Wi-Fi node disappears, and you need that four-digit code to address the OpenEVSE Wi-Fi module via the address openevse-the four-digit code dot local. I found that both my OpenEVSE and Juicebox upgrade EVSEs we're limited to a maximum current of 24 amps upon initial boot. Apparently, the default configuration is as a level 1 charger, which is limited to 24 amps in the software. If you go into the configuration screen and click on EVSE, you can change the service level to level 2. Then you can go back to the max current setting and change it to what is appropriate for your electrical connection. In my case, I have the unit plugged into a 50 amp NEMA 1450 circuit, so 80% of that is 40 amps. I'll let you figure out the rest of the settings on your own. I hope this was useful. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.